alive, that God has kept us for another new day. And um, we, we, we give him all the praise. Uh, I want us this morning, as we approach the last week in the month of uh, July, uh, we're going in, <laughs> love the good morning, we're going in excited, we're going in thankful to God, the giver of life, our protector, our healer, our strong tower, the solid rock upon which we stand. So we're going to declare the faithfulness of God. We're going to speak Psalms to declare the praises of God. As we do so, please feel free to give exuberant praise for all God has done for you. And also to remind you this morning, you know, I want us to repeat it every morning that we will say to ourselves that according to Psalm, sorry, Isaiah 55, 11, God has said, so shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So this morning, God's word coming out of your mouth is being, going to be planted into the earth. The earth will carry those words this morning because they are words of life. They are words spoken by faith. We just don't speak. We speak by faith. We speak believing. We speak and declare God's word into the earth. And as we speak, Romans 10, 17 reminds us, our faith will grow because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as our faith grows, we continue to repeat this word we will see it manifest in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we'll start off with Psalm 33. Psalm 33, as we begin to worship the Lord. Psalm 33 says, sing joyfully to the Lord. You righteous, it is fitting for the upright to praise him. It is fitting for us this morning to praise the Lord. That is what we do, the children of the Most High God. We've come, oh God, to bless your holy name. The Bible says in Psalm 33, verse 2, Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully. Shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. For the word of the Lord is right and true. And that's why we do command the weak, because God's word that we're going to speak, it is right. God's word that we're going to declare, it is true. And it will manifest in our lives. We are confident in it, in the name of Jesus. The Lord loves righteousness. The Bible says, the earth is full of his unveiling love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the words of the Lord, the heavens were made. So say this morning, thank you, Jesus, because by my words, my earth and the things around me will be made. By the words that I declare, creative ability will manifest in my life because I'm a child of God. The Bible says the starry host by the breath of, its, of his mouth. God gathers the waters from the seas into jars. <laughs> God takes the deep. He puts it into storehouses. How wonderful. How great. Let the whole earth fear the Lord. Ah, let all the people of the earth revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Does anybody feel so excited that this is our God? Do you feel excited this morning that this is our Father? That we are created like Him with such authority to speak His word, with such authority to speak with life. 33 verse 9, um, verse 9 says, For He spoke and it came to be. This morning the things that you speak, they will come to be in the name of Jesus. He commanded and it stood firm. What are you declaring? What is God's word you are declaring? In the name of Jesus, it will stand firm. The Lord foils the plan of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of people. This is just, we haven't even started command, come speaking. It's just to remind us that as we worship God, we are like him. This is our father. We have his DNA. If this is how God operates, 
this is how we are to operate. If this is how God speaks, this is how we should speak with authority. So I feel it's important. When we do command the week, we must speak with authority. God is reminding us that we are his children. He wants us to remember that on this earth, we are his legal representatives through Jesus Christ. And that's why I love this verse so much. The Bible says the plans of the Lord will stand firm forever. Nobody can stop it. The purposes of his heart is throughout all generations. I don't know what you may have faced. I don't know what disappointment. God is saying, my daughter, trust me, my purpose in your life will stand firm. My plans for you will stand firm. Nobody can stop it. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the family whose God is the Lord. I thank you, God, that you are the Lord of my family. You are the Lord of my family. Thank you, Lord, for the people he chose for his inheritance. We are here. We are the ones that God chose for his inheritance. We are blessed. From the heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. Wow, wow, wow. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for such a beautiful reminder of who you are in our lives this morning. Now, as we know, this month we have been declaring God's word. Thank you so much, everyone. We have been declaring God's word. And today we're rounding up the month of July, but we're speaking this week on the word power. 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 We've talked about divine uh, direction. We've prayed about divine help. We've spoken on open doors. Now we're going to talk about power. We're going to begin to declare the power of the Most High God, the power that we rely upon, the power of God that causes things to move, the power of God that brings, that has a creative ability, the power that stands behind that word. We're going to speak some confessions. And don't forget, we repeat and we focus each week. That's what we do. So we take as many scriptures and we declare it. And I want you to please personalize it. Make it personal to your reality. Make it personal to whatever you're going through. Whatever your plans are, your goals are, the things you know that this week, this month, this year that you're believing God for, even in this new decade, we will speak the word. We will plant it this morning. So we start off with Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And so we begin to declare, as I go about my business this week, I declare that I am divinely enabled to accomplish my task and my objectives. As I go about this week, I will testify of the goodness and the wondrous works of the Lord concerning my ministry, concerning my family, concerning the works of my hands in the name of Jesus. I will spread the word of the Lord. My life will be a witness of the power of Jesus Christ. My life will be a witness to bring souls unto God in the name of Jesus. 2 Timothy 1 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of self control. I step into this week bold, courageous, fearless. I declare that I'm able to tackle any situation and circumstances that comes my way. I have a heart of self-control. I approach the week with an attitude of self-restraint and discipline. I am resilient. I am resilient. I can handle tough situations. My competence will be seen today. My competence will be seen this week. My competence will be seen this year in the works of my hands in my business, on my job, in my education, in the name of Jesus. I confidently take on new exploits 
and new opportunities. I am not weak. I am not afraid. I run forward. I go boldly for the ideas in my heart. They might seem to be big. Nobody might seem to be doing them. But because I do not have the spirit of fear, because I have the power of the Lord upon me, because I have love and self-control, the virtues of God, I will deliver. I will go forth. I will prosper. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above what I can ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. I want us to realize that this scripture reminds us that there are two types of prayers that God hears. God hears the prayers of his children that they speak out of their mouth. God hears the prayers of his children that they think with their mind. <laughs> There's something powerful there. So our thoughts, it says, I am able to do far above all you can ask or think. So there are some things that when you begin to think it, you are in your God nature. When you begin to think it, you are operating on a spiritual level. The Bible says that when the sons of men gathered and they wanted to build a tower to reach the heaven, the Bible says that now because they are in one accord, nothing that they begin to think or to do will be hindered to them. So just when you make up your mind to do something that you believe in your heart is according to the will of God and the spirit of God convicts you, God, in God's eyes, you have succeeded. So above what we can think this morning and what we can ask, we begin to declare that the dynamic power of God is in me. I said that because our speaking in command the weak and our thinking must be aligned. When you are declaring and commanding your destiny, when you are commanding this word and speaking over, speaking it, because you must say it for your children, I say it for your children's children, you must not doubt in your heart. You must make sure that what you are declaring with your mouth and what you are speaking and thinking is the same because both are being answered. So don't bring confusion into your prayer point because your mind is not thinking and your mouth saying the same thing. Both are prayers. Praise the Lord. So this morning, as we say this word, we say it with a heart that believes it, with a mind that believes it, with a mouth that speaks it. And we say the dynamic power of God is inherent in me. The, this power enables me. Therefore, I accomplish extraordinary things. The power of God is upon me. Therefore, I accomplish extraordinary things. The reasons and the assignment God created for me, I walk in the power to bring it to manifestation. That which is beyond my natural ability, I am able to process. That which is beyond my natural ability, I am able to solve. I solve things easily things beyond my natural aptitude, things beyond my natural aptitude. The power of God is galvanizing my brain. The power of God is galvanizing my mind. The power of God is galvanizing my creativity in the name of Jesus. Hmm. I heard somebody say this, oh, a man of God, I can't remember, he missed someone I was listening to. He said, four generations after Adam, Adam and Eve delivered Cain and Abel. Then they had Seth. A couple of generations later, more and more children were being born. How did they know to deliver children? How did they know the right way to bring out a child? When they saw the umbilical cord, how did they know to cut it to fix it? How did within four to seven civilizations Men started making houses, started lighting fires. How? There is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty brings it to life. This morning, there is a power in you that lets you to know what to do. God created us internally with the ability to bring forth power, with the ability to bring forth life. The power you are commanding this morning is the power that gives you supernatural aptitude to know what to do. 
God has put inside humankind. And now, even though man fell, they were doing things in the early years, going through the Bible and start to see. When they started to think of how to build ships, to take him from Tashish and to all those other nations. There was a power that was bringing out. That power began to speak forth. It's coming forth in your life. The power to do, the power to be, the power to create that God has given to you, begin to declare over your life, over your children, over your family, over your generation, over your loved ones. The power of God will manifest. Isaiah 40, 29. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Woo! It's been a very blessed 2020. So many things have happened. By his grace, we're still here. And so we speak for that we will not be weary. We will not be tired. We will not faint. We will not give up on our dreams. Let's begin to declare that I am divinely strengthened by the Lord. I am divinely strengthened by the Lord. The second half of this year, my weakness is replaced by God's mighty power. My weakness is, is replaced by God's mighty power. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. This week I declare that as I go closer to God, as I know God, I will experience the active, transformative power of God. It will cause adverse situations to turn around. The power of God in my life will cause circumstances that require a reversal to turn around. God will cause the power of God to activate the word of God in my life. I will thrive in the name of Jesus. I will thrive in the name of Jesus. The power of God turns around negative experiences. The power of God turns around negative situations in my life. By the power of God, my future is great. By the power of God, my, my future is bright. By the power of God, my future is filled with the grace and the glory of God. By the power of God, the future of my children is glorious. The Bible says the path of the righteous is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter into the coming day. By the power of God, my light will shine brighter and brighter. By the power of God, my destiny will shine brighter and brighter. By the power of God, my ministry will shine brighter and brighter. By the power of God, my home will shine brighter and brighter. By the power of God, my health will shine brighter and brighter. By the power of God, my my womb will shine brighter and brighter. By the power of God, the steps and everything I lay my hands upon to do will shine brighter and brighter. We declare this word by the power of God, by the power of God. The power of God is working inside of me. Second Samuel 20, 30. Second Samuel 20, 30. In your strength, I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale a wall. We will not be afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Let's begin to declare. I declare that I am infused with the mighty power of God that enables me overcome any obstacle, that enables me vanquish every adversary before me. I don't know what adversary, what is standing up against you, what is mitigating against you, fighting your mind, fighting your body, fighting your spirit, fighting your soul. Every enemy is vanquished by the power of God. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be intimidated. Second, um, Second Samuel 22, 30. Second Samuel 22, 30. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be intimidated. The mighty one of Israel dwells within me. Every long-standing issue that has sought to slow me down, every long-standing issue that has tried to cause my head to be bound, I overcome it in the name of Jesus. I overcome it in the name of Jesus. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, hmm, not by might, not by power, 
but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Whoa, I know a lot of us love this scripture, right? I declare, I will not struggle. I will not exert strength needlessly to accomplish my goals and objectives. I will not struggle or exert strength needlessly to accomplish my goals and objectives or force through any issues and tasks set before me this week. The divine power of the Lord, the divine and enabling power of the Lord that comes by the spirit of the living God rests upon me. It will cause me to do things in a way that is of ease. Things will fall seamlessly in place in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of the living God, things that I want to do will fall in place in the name of Jesus. The spirit of the Lord is my helper. I'm not going to boast in my power. I'm not going to boast in my ability. I will boast in the spirit of the living God who empowers me and enables me to do all things. Genesis 49 verse 3. Genesis 49 verse 3. It says, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling in power, excelling in honor. This is what our testimony should be. We as the children of God, and also we're going to declare it over our children, both those that are born and those that are yet to be born. We're going to declare, I loudly proclaim that this week, ah, over my children, I speak forth that they will be filled with might, they will be filled with strength. They will excel in honor. They will excel in power. My children's children, they will be filled with might. They will be filled with strength. They will excel in honor. They will excel in power. I also declare that in the name of Jesus, that I will be showcased this week. I will be an example of excellence. I'll be an example of competence. The enabling power of God operates in me and operates through me. Today, this week, this month, this year, this decade, I will be highly esteemed among my peers and colleagues. I will be highly esteemed. My head will not ever bow down in shame. My head will never bow down in shame, but I'll be valued, I'll be respected because the power of God is working inside of me. Second Corinthians 4, 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. You know, sometimes when we're doing this, it's amazing. What you are doing is so spiritual and so powerful. We mustn't be tired. Just keep declaring it. You know, what we're doing in Command the Week as we do this is a, it's also a warfare. So, you know, <laughs> we're doing warfare. We're doing deliverance. The word of the Lord it's active and it's powerful. So as we speak it, don't be weary, don't be tired. You know, don't say, okay, okay, I'll continue later. No, speak the word, declare the word. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, we now have the, this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. God is using this scripture to remind us that the awesome testimonies and the great things that come from our lives is going to come from him. Therefore, let us say, I boldly declare that my light will shine this week. I have this power of God. It's in an earthen vessel. If people look at me, they will think she doesn't have much to give. Some people have said to you, she doesn't have much to give. She is weak. She's struggling. She's trying. She's not going to be able to get there. She's on this level. She's okay. But she can't deal or play on the big arena. I reject that in the name of Jesus. I boldly declare that my light will shine this week. My light will shine far and wide. My fame will spread far and wide. The value that is inside of me will be seen by God. Because God is on my inside, the greatest treasure of the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. I am going to be, I am able to be exceptional. I am able to be exceptional and remarkable beyond my ability by the spirit of God. Exceptional things come out of me. Remarkable things come out of me. Jaw dropping testimonies come out of my life in the name of Jesus. 
Colossians chapter 1, verse 11. Colossians chapter 1, verse 11. Being strengthened with all might, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. I speak for that this week. My body is strengthened. My soul and my spirit is strengthened by the mighty power of the spirit. By the mighty power of the spirit, I am energized. I am invigorated to fulfill my purpose this week, to fulfill my assignment this week, as I have risen up today, July 27, 2020. I receive fresh strength. I receive fresh energy. I receive fresh ability in the name of Jesus. Second Thessalonians 11. Second Thessalonians 1, 11. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power, he may bring to fruition every desire for goodness and your every need prompted by faith. This is from God. That God will make us, all of us, worthy of his calling. That by his power, we will bring to fruition, we will bring to manifestation every desire for goodness. Whatever desire you have for goodness is coming forth. Whatever desire you have for goodness is coming forth. Your deeds prompted by faith is coming forth. Because you started your deeds, your, your activities, your, your business, your career, the works of your hand, your ministry, whatever the deeds that you started by faith is coming to pass. Therefore, I declare, I am empowered by God to fulfill my purpose on this earth. I am empowered by God to fulfill my purpose on this earth. I am empowered by God to live as a worthy ambassador for Christ. I am a worthy ambassador for Christ. I will never bring disrepute to God's name. I am a worthy ambassador of Christ. My life will experience the pleasures of goodness, the good things that God has lined up for me on this side of the earth my life will experience it the good things god has purposed for me my life will experience it in the name of jesus i'm not afraid of death i'm not afraid of the future because all the days that god has prepared for me i will live it in the name of jesus i will manifest it i will see my children's children i will live to a ripe old age and complete the assignment of god for my life in the name of jesus Second Chronicles 27, 6. Second Chronicles 27, 6. Thank you so much for capturing these scriptures. Thank you, ma. Thank you so much, my sis. God bless you. So Jotham became mighty hmm, because he ordered his ways before the Lord his God. So Jotham became mighty because he ordered his ways before the Lord. This week, we order our ways. This week, I order my ways before God. Every week of this year, I order my ways before God. This decade, I order my ways before God. And as I do so, I will become great. I will become great. I will be mighty on this earth. My seed will be mighty on this earth to the fourth generation if Jesus tarries. I boldly declare that my ways are pleasing to God. My ways are pleasing to God. Because my ways are pleasing to God, I will be at peace with people around me. Because my ways are pleasing to God, I will love people around me. I will not entertain strife. Strife taps my power. I will not give in to strife. Strife taps my peace. I will not give to strife. Strife uh, try to remove love from my heart. I will not give room to strife. I walk around with the power of God. And part of what I do is that I forgive. I walk in love. I walk in forgiveness. I order my ways before the Lord. Even those that seek to antagonize me, I do not strive with them because they will be subdued for my sake in the name of Jesus. Order my steps, O Lord. Order my steps in your word, O Lord. Order my steps in your word, O oh Lord. Order my steps in your word, O oh Lord. When we are, our steps are ordered in God, we become mighty. This week, I become mightier than I was last week. Next week, I become mightier than I was this week. I become mighty daily, daily, daily. 
mighty in spirit, mighty in power, mighty in my spiritual work, mighty in my energy level, mighty all around in the name of Jesus. Daniel chapter 2 verse 23. Daniel chapter 2 verse 23. To you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise for you have given me wisdom and power. <clears throat> wisdom and power. Even now, you have made known to me what we requested of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. <clears throat> this, I just want to quickly say this, we're moving into a season. We are not moving in, we are in a season. 2020 opened a new decade where what we have seen will manifest in different ways, which is global issues that are confounding of even the most quote unquote intelligent scientific minds. Daniel said, the power of God and the wisdom of God made known matters that caused kings, prime ministers, presidents not to sleep. Global issues, God says, the church, by the power of God, it will reveal to us. I'm part of the church. You are part of the church. Let's begin to declare that over the body of Christ, over the church, over our lives, because we're all part of it, God's purposes will be established. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you praise for you have given unto us your wisdom and power upon all those who love you, upon all those who serve you. You have given to us wisdom and power. This week, I will operate with wisdom in all I do. This week, the power of God will be manifested in my life in all I do. As I call upon God, I receive insights to complex issues around me. I receive insights to complex issues around me. I know what to do. I am not confounded. I receive the wisdom to solve problems, problems in my family, long-standing problems. The solution comes to me in the name of Jesus. Problems on my job, I receive solutions in the name of Jesus. Problems in my business, I receive solutions in the name of Jesus. Problems in my career, in my education, I receive solutions in the name of Jesus. When people come to speak to me, to ask my advice, I will speak by the power and the wisdom of God. I will not speak vain words. I will speak the mind of Christ into situations. I will, be, I will stand apart. I'll be known as one who has been given revelation, insight, counsel, might, because the fear of the Lord rests upon me. Luke 10, 19. I want us to begin to declare, I'm a woman of value. I'm a woman of great value. You say that to yourself all the time because you have the wisdom and the power of God. I'm a woman of great value. Everyone that comes in contact with me experiences value and experiences the power of God. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. Ah, as we do this work, no matter the attack that comes against us, we have authority over it. Let's remember, we have authority over it. Therefore, I declare, I have the authority of God in my life. I am a sign and a wonder. I am a sign and a wonder. I function and operate in the authority Jesus has given to me. No enemy can intimidate me. No generational issues can stop me. I put a bloodline against every generational issue that wants to manifest in my life. It will not go further in the name of Jesus. I speak with authority. I function and operate by the power of Jesus Christ. No scheme, no machination, no plot of the adversary will succeed against me in the name of Jesus. No generational curse will manifest in my life in the name of Jesus. By the power of God, I thread upon upon serpents, upon scorpions, upon anything that has been in my generation, before my life, in my, in, in, in my family, things that have manifested, I cut it off by the bloodline, I destroy it by the cutline. Affliction will not arise in my life in the name of Jesus. Rounds of affliction, I cancel you today in the name of Jesus. I declare that the power and the authority of God rest upon me in Jesus' name. I want us to speak boldly and to deal with some issues 
recurring issues in our lives, recurring patterns. They represent serpents and scorpions are trying to attack us, attack our children. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Your words have power. So when we speak, we're not just speaking. The earth is carrying those things to places we do not understand. We are speaking spirits. Speaking spirits speak with authority. Speaking spirits speak with power. The Bible says in Acts 6, 8, and Stephen, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders, signs and wonders among the people. If God is saying that he has given us power to do great signs and wonders, that power will manifest in our lives. It will manifest in our lives. It will manifest in our mind. It will manifest in all we do in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you because this week, your grace and your ability will be clearly seen in my life in the name of Jesus. Things that are difficult for most people will be easily done for me. Your handiwork will be seen by those around me in the name of Jesus. I will perform great wonders. I will perform great signs. The power that raised Christ up from the dead dwells upon me. The power that raised Christ up from the dead dwells within me. I speak for that this week. The power of God is working in my body. The power of God is working in my mind. The power of God is working in my emotions. The power of God is working in every aspect of me. Mentally, I'm sound. Spiritually, I'm sound. Emotionally, I'm sound. Physically, I'm sound. This week, the power of God is energizing me. Anything that has made me tired, weary, feel weak. The power of God is breaking it right now in the name of Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The power of God is operating in my life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I step out and do exploits this week because the power of God is upon me. Finally, 1 Samuel 10, 6. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily and you shall prophesy with them and be changed into another man. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily and you shall prophesy with them and be changed into another man. Mm. I receive a fresh measure of the Holy Spirit. Begin to say, I receive a fresh measure of the Holy Spirit. This hour, I receive a fresh measure of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill me anew. Holy Spirit, fill me afresh. Fill me to a new measure. As of July 26, whatever measure I was on, double my measure, Holy Spirit, as I've asked of you. Fill me afresh. Energize me. Fill me anew, Holy Spirit. And I begin to declare that the power of, this, of the Holy Spirit is activated in me. The power of the Holy Spirit is activated in me. I can do all things. I receive fresh power. I have become another woman. This morning, on this social media platform, on this Zoom platform, I have become another woman. I receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I receive a fresh measure of the Holy Spirit. The measure that I had coming into this week was was sufficient for so far. Where I am going to, this next level, this new exploit, I receive a fresh deposit of the Holy Spirit. I speak with understanding. As the Holy Spirit has come upon me afresh, I speak as an expert. I speak as someone who, who, is, who has knowledge. I boldly make known. I am a wonder to many. I boldly make known the results of God's power in my life. I speak forth in the name of Jesus. I am changed into another woman. I'm not a woman who is afraid anymore. I'm not a woman that feels I'm under circumstances. I'm not a woman that feels powerless. I'm not a woman that feels that life just happens to me. I am a woman this week going forward to make things happen in life. I am a woman that will manifest the power of God. I am a woman that will manifest the wonder of God. My seed will manifest manifest the wonder of God. My family, my spouse, my children, my home will be seen as a place where God's wonder manifests in the name of Jesus. All that comes into contact with me, we experience the life-giving power of God. I will speak forth life wherever I am. Signs and wonders will manifest from these hands. There will be no distance in the spirit. I receive my ministry. I don't know who this is for. I receive my ministry. You've gone through some pain. You've gone through heartache. You've gone through disappointment. 
disappointment. You've gone through what looks to be shame, situations that seems to have baffled you. Today, the power of God comes upon you. As the spirit of the Lord has been upon you, I prophesy unto you that you're a new woman, that you're a new man. It's the dawning of a new day in your life. Many will come and hear your testimony. Many will come and open their mouth at the great and mighty things that God is starting to do. You are a new man. You are a new woman. Begin to say, I'm a new woman. I'm a new woman. The spirit of the Lord has rested upon me. This hour during command the week, I made a note of it. July 27, a fresh spirit comes upon me. A different spirit. I will engage God's word. I will not be small. I will not be limited. I will not be small. I will not be limited. I arise. Timidity is done in my life. There's no more timidity. I am a woman of power. I am a woman of value. I stand upon God's word and I will see the manifestation of God's promises over my life in the name of Jesus. Oh, as we have made our confession and testify of what the blood of the Lamb has done, my confession will become flesh and manifest in my life in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We bless the Lord for this morning's Command the Week titled Power. I want us to keep listening and declaring it on our own lives and believe that the power of God will translate you. I'm telling you, sisters, I see God lifting us. I see God manifesting. I see God taking us. I see us taking new territories by the power of God. Joshua needed power. I don't know who this is for. It's time to take new land, new possession, new territory, new landscape in anything that you are involved in because the power that is working in you gives you the ability to arise and to step forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining the Esther's Preparation Room Monday platform where we command the week. As most of us know, we also um, pray and uh, on Saturdays where we come as believers and we stand in the place of intercession for our families, for the church of God, for what God is doing. God tends to reveal to us what he's doing in the body of Christ and in the nations. We stand in the gap and we pray for the persecuted church. But I just wanted to tell you one of the most powerful things we do every month, and it's going to happen this Saturday, first, second, and third. First, second, and third, we will have what we call the Holy Ghost Hour. So next Monday, we will not have our command the week. We will be doing it in the Holy Ghost Hour. So please, for more information, just send us a message, send us a DM. Um, I'll try and make sure that the link is also posted on our, uh, on our handle. But please remember, Holy Ghost Hour is going to be a time we spend three days with the Holy Spirit. We start like this at 5 a.m. or 12 midnight, but we do it for three days and we're praying in the spirit. We are creating in the spirit. We're speaking. Bible says, they that speak in an unknown tongue, speak mysteries to God. In this season, you must engage all the spiritual elements. We don't just operate on this earth level. We operate from the spirit. Anything you see manifesting in the physical happened first in the spirit. This global pandemic there was a global pandemic released from the spirit and then mankind saw it. We are not designed to be reactive. We are God's children. So we first go into the spirit, understand what is happening and then begin to pray and declare and manifest. So these next three days, as we do a walk with the Holy Spirit, we spend a lot of time and we, always, we, we tend to have revelations. We have prophecies. We have prophetic words. It can come from some of the women themselves on the platform. So people receive words and we prepare and we empower ourselves. So August 1st, 2nd and 3rd, 12 midnight, Eastern Standard Time, and then 5 a.m. British and West African time. We go in in the place of prayer. So we'll continue command the week. I believe it will be August 10th because next week we will be in Holy Ghost hour and we look forward to having you. And you can reach out to me personally and send me a DM in case you want or send it to our extra preparation room as we do so. We bless the Lord. Thank you for this time invested. We're going out and we're having a victorious week in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you, everyone. God bless you.